Hi, and welcome to what's probably going to be the last video about Lambda and API Gateway for a while. In this video, we will add authentication to our REST API Gateway, more specifically using Amazon Cognito. It can always be smart to have some form of authentication to protect our APIs, especially endpoints where users can perform changes to the underlying data. In our case, am I talking about the post endpoint created in the previous video? So today we are going to add authentication to that endpoint. Before we continue, if you find my videos interesting and want to learn more about serverless and AWS, please consider subscribing to my channel and smash that bell icon to get notified when I publish more content. Let's get started. First, we need to create a new Cognito user pool. If you haven't used Amazon Cognito before, it lets you add user signup, sign in, and access control to your applications. In other words, you don't need to write complicated authentication and authorization code in your applications. Instead, let Cognito handle that for you. Now, click Manage User Pool, then create a new user pool. Give the pool a name, I'll call mine uh, MyBirds, and click Review Defaults. Now just scroll down and hit Create Pool. Now we have created a user pool. You may wonder what a user pool is. Well, the short version is that a user pool is where you store users. Inside a user pool, you can also configure how users can authenticate themselves and control their access to different applications. I'll provide a link in the description if you want to read more about it. Next, we need to configure a domain users can access to authenticate themselves. I'll just use an Amazon Cognito domain and call it something like bird test one. Since this domain has to be globally unique, I first have to check availability before saving the changes. Now that's done, we also have to add a resource server with some scopes to control what access we may get, given that we are authenticated with our user pool. I'll call the resource server birds, and the identifier can in this example be the API gateway name. Now just create one scope called bird.create and save the changes. So what now? Well, there is still some configuration to be done. We can now create a new app client. App clients allow us to perform unauthenticated API operations like sign in and handle forgotten passwords. I'll provide a link in the description if you want to read more about app clients. So give the app client a name and hit create. Next, we can head over to app client settings. Here we want to do some changes. First, enable Cognito user pool under identity providers, then update the callback URL. I'll just set it to localhost for the sake of this demo. Under OAuth2, enable implicit grant as OAuth flow. And enable phone, email, and open ID under OAuth scopes, as well as the custom scope we just created. It's worth mentioning that I'm using implicit grant just for demo purposes. So you should either use authorization code grant or client credentials for your production application. Lastly, hit save changes. Now we need a user in our user pool. So let's head over to users and groups and create a new user with some temporary credentials. Well, that was a handful. Now to the easy part, adding authentication to the API Gateway. Open the API Gateway, go to Authorizers and click Create New Authorizer. Give it a name like BirdAuth and choose Cognito as type. Then choose the Cognito user pool and under Token Source write Authorization. The token source is the HTTP header where you send the bearer token after you have been authenticated. 
Now the authorizer is added to our API, we need to attach it to our post endpoint. Go to resources and open the post resource and the method execution. Here we can choose our new authorizer under authorization. And now add our custom OAuth scope, which we can find under App Client settings. Lastly, deploy the changes. Now go back to the Cognito user pool. From here, launch the hosted UI. If we take a look at the URL, you can see that this corresponds to the domain we created previously. And Cognito is so kind as hosting a web UI where we can log in using our username and password. And we will get a token in return. Since this is the first time we log in, we have to create a new password. Okay, now that we have set a new password, we can go over to Postman and test the API endpoint. I have here the request from the previous video. I have inserted the URL and a request body. But now we also need to be authenticated. So go over to the authorization tab and choose OAuth2. We want to configure a new token. So give the token a name, grant type should be implicit and the callback should be localhost. We want to copy the auth URL from our user pool hosted UI as well as the client ID. Now hit get new access token. Let's just type in the username and password. And success! We got a new access token. Since Postman is an awesome tool, it adds the authorization header to our request and paste in the token we got from Cognito. Now all that's left is just to hit send. And yay, it worked! Now you have learned how to create your own Cognito user pool and how to implement that into your API gateway. As I said earlier, this is probably the last video about this topic for a while. I'm going to focus more on infrastructure as code, but still related to APIs and Lambda. I'm going to use the serverless framework and probably later some Terraform. If that sounds interesting, please remember to subscribe to my channel, and if you want me to cover more Lambda and other AWS stuff, just leave a comment and maybe I'll create some more videos about that in this playlist. But for now, see you in the next topic.